Hey there, it's Mark. This is Oscar. He's a producer with us. He's been with us for six years. And in this conversation, we are going to cover off how to increase your sales, how to listen to customers so that way they're more happy with you. Uh, Oscar shares some information on why clients cry over how awesome he is. <laughs> he doesn't realize that yet. <laughs> and so much more. And are processes important or not? They are. <laughs> In our agency, what essentially a producer does, they are like the person who makes it happen. But more than anything, what you're really, really good at is helping clients figure out what they need. Sometimes clients will come to you and they they already know exactly what they want. You just get to the, the, the bottom of you know what their motivations are. Mm. You know why are they doing the project? You know, how much money they want to spend? How much, how long they want to take? And and what where are they going to value really? Guys, okay, there is no process. I mean, I don't have a process. <laughs> I think I'm just very good at um, at reading people. I feel that if you if you have somebody's trust and um, somebody's almost like faith in you, then you can take them through whatever process you want. Mm -hmm. But it won't feel like a process. Why do clients love Oscar so much? <laughs> Whether it's good or bad news, just just be very to the point and uh, let them make the decision. I'm, I make sure that every step along the way, I'm presenting options and I'm letting them make the decision. Don't worry about it. We know what we're doing. You're hiring us for a reason. We'll kind of loop you in along the way and make sure that you're part of the big decisions along the way, right? And it removes any kind of additional stress. If we're talking, we're gonna talk about video specifically, right? Like the companies we work with, like they, they don't have like a video producer in house, right? Thinking about a video is like on top of a million things they have going on. So this is, for example, somebody uh, like Wendy at East Pen, like she continuously reiterates to me how she loves the fact that she can count on us and she has so much trust in us that she, she just goes with our recommendation and then and then we're always able to to meet expectations we talk about the fact that like how people how clients feel about the work is more important than the quality of work like when i started at fanta one of the first things uh, that i that i ran into is that, or I, I even brought it up to you a, a few times when i said hey mark like is it normal for a project to take this long, you know, like sometimes I felt like I was, I, I would take on a project that was supposed to take a month and then I'm like three months into it and I'm only halfway through the pro process. Right. Clients have this kind of immediate need and, and if you don't try and solve that right away, they, they just lose steam and they, it just, it just goes into the back burner for them. And then it's just like this never ending project, right? And so I kind of identified that the reason why that was happening uh, in part was because we had this very kind of strict process. If they don't feel friction, then, then, then it's, it's smooth and, and, it, and it gets them more um, engaged into, into what we're doing, right? So, so, here, so here's the thing that we've changed up since then. What we were very good at, we identified a process that worked really, really well for like one group of people. And we're like, well, this is, this is the Fanta way. This is the process. Mm -hmm. We have to do this. And it didn't work for a whole other yeah. group of people. The fear from an owner point of view or a salesperson point of view or whatever is that you're going to tie up resources and effort into something that disappears. But the downside is like the rigid structure that we feel actually gives us a lot of security is the very thing that keeps other people from feeling good about you or moving forward. And, and I, did, I did learn that. I did learn that a lot from you. Like, like you, you drive people crazy because you just make up so much stuff as you go along. So for yeah. every client that emails me and says, Mark, I just want you to know, Oscar is amazing. <laughs> I have the team on the other side saying, Mark, I just need you to know, what is Oscar doing? He's not following the process. He's like, he's yeah, like making but, stuff mean, up. Yeah. I, you know what? I, a good case for, for how this approach can be very good in the end is, for example, a company like um, Pentair, right? Mm -hmm. Where now they have a different name now, but yeah. I can think of the first project we did with them where like we were putting them through the process and it was like, no, we need the contract signed and all this and and um, they're just not fast at getting things done, right? Now we, we forced them through the process. Actually, it took longer to start the project back then. And when the project was all done, all said and done, it, it actually took like three times longer than it was supposed to take. Mm -hmm. And I think we got paid like a year after we finished the project, right? I don't know if I've shared this with the team, 
but I made it clear to, to and I, maybe we've talked about this, where I say, I say clients come first, yeah. employees come like a very distant second. <laughs> Like, we're all in this together. We're all on the same team. We're all fighting for the same cause, like, in our family. Mm -hmm. So if a client calls me at 4 a.m. in the morning and goes, Mark, I need to be on a conference call in half an hour. I'm going to be waking people up, and, and I don't want to hear anyone on the team say it's 4.30 in the morning. What? I'm going to be like, no, a client like a client needs to talk to us. Right? Yeah. Clients come first. Yeah. Employees come second. Well, listen, I, I spent <laughs> so much time working in customer service. I did collections over the phone, which... Right. It's like this very challenging uh, place where you have to be an a-hole pretty much right. and still make people feel good about what you're doing. I remember that when I had that job, I was a top performer every month. I got moved into the most important accounts that, that we had to collect on. The way these places work, like any kind of call center, is you have a script, right? You call people, you ask for so-and-so, and then you start reading off, and it's like the most brutal scary and and just like inhumane script you've ever heard you know? right these are people that are like They're, four months behind on their visa i i remember i had this requirement which which is go by the script don't spend more than five minutes on every, on any call okay uh if, if you haven't collected in five minutes you move on right well okay so i, I, I consistently I know, I know you so yeah. what you didn't do the script and you spent what 20 minutes on a call yeah my <laughs> script would change depending on the call and it would go on how that person picked up the phone. Okay. You know, like if when I say, can I speak with Mark Drager? And, and the answer is, who's asking? Yes. Right? I can't just jump into the script. Like, of course. if somebody asks, yeah, sure, this is Mark, how can I help you? Maybe you'll go to the script. So for example, I would just kind of feel the person over the phone. Uh, I remember that the quality control people who like listen to calls and like review them and stuff, we, we would get these like scores every month. Mm -hmm. And if you get, I remember that it was kind of like a, a t t t whatever, it's like a 10 point system. And if you had two or three consecutive calls below like a seven, um, it, it was like grounds for getting fired basically. Mm. I never hit over a five in any quality control. Oh really? <laughs> Ever. <laughs> but in return, I was the top I was the top collector in my team. I got moved over to commercial accounts yeah. where, where I was looking to collect on like way bigger debts. And, and I had so many meetings with uh, the, the, the CEO of the company. He used to basically say like, don't just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> you know, like I'll deal with quality people. Okay. They don't like you very much, but you know what? Like the returns you're getting for us are, okay, are so, great. So right? here's, here's what I'm hearing. We need to build systems and processes because what we need to do is we need to build it for scalability. You know, Oscar, yeah. Oscar may be great at this, but Oscar's not working with me anymore, and suddenly now my whole company's out of something. Here's right. the thing. Here's the thing at Fanta. I have like broken that rule every step along the way. So I have only built my company around the people. I've never built it around the role, mm -hmm. right? And so you have this skill where you're like, you're great at listening to people, you're good at humanizing them, you can understand where they're coming from, you can mirror and match, you can do all of these things. If you're trying to build this really large company, you feel like you have to have this structure, right? You yeah. feel like you have to have the process which pushes people away. You feel like good work will make up for a bad experience, which it won't. Mm -hmm. What do I do with this? So, so these are the things that you're really good at. Um, give me like one or two things that I can do to be better at this if I suck at this. Try to figure out who you're talking to, right? Like, figure out what it is. And, and this is something I learned from, from Fanta, from, from like the original process. What kind of client are you dealing with mm -hmm. and what do they value? That so, was huge. That's that it. was huge. The, what do they value? In the, in the Big Five, we did a video on, uh, on, on the five questions. The what do they value, I invented for you. Yeah. Because, because you are such a creative person. You are such a creative person that when you came in, you would come up with, <laughs> just like so many ideas and you were just like idea 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 and finally I was just like I don't feel like all clients value ideas and so we had to like create yeah. a structure yeah. to ask like what does the yeah, client and I, value and I definitely learned that and and, and now it's like that's like the key tool in my toolbox you know? right it's like one of the first questions I ask people is like what are you concerned about like I mean do you just want to spend five grand ten grand okay. twenty do you just want to make sure it gets hit by a certain date you know, uh, do you just want to make sure that like you see always in the video and everything else doesn't matter? Mm. You know, like to start with, like what does the client really care about? 
and just hold on to that because that's what's going to save you in the end. Like in the end, like if you, if everything else goes wrong, if at the end of the day you were like, this is what you care about and I still took care of you. I still make sure that that got done. Mm -hmm. They'll forgive, they'll you, for forgive you for everything else. Everything else. else. And, um, so, so this is what really what's key though. So we have a 12 person team. I do almost all of the initial sales. Right. If someone is introduced to the company, they're going to talk to me. Mm -hmm. But once they talk to me, I hand them over to someone like Oscar. Out of everyone in our team, out of everyone in our company, Oscar consistently turns one-off clients into ongoing annual year clients. So if a project goes from being this size to being that size, well, that's an overage. But it's not like we're going out of our way to like, hey, high five, no. we managed to sell more because I think that's taking advantage of the client. Well, also, uh, the thing is, clients are never afraid of spending more. They just need a reason to spend more. <laughs> so, That's a whole video there. We should do a whole video on <laughs> sure. that. Sure. So, I mean, when it comes to overage, so you just don't paint it like an overage. It's like, it's something you need. It's right. plain and simple. Or like a process can just become something more organic. But here's where I'm going but with it's this. Fine. So you consistently actually increase projects more than anyone else. So up, you upsell. I don't like that term. More clients than anyone else in the company, you turn from being a one-off project to ongoing. We have more people writing me, telling me how amazing you are than anyone else. We have, uh, we have more clients crying, <laughs> crying over, over uh, how sweet Oscar is because they see <laughs> you as a son or a grandson yeah. or a cousin or whatever else. And, and here's the thing. Like, I think half of it comes down to just who you are. Mm -hmm. But the Could other be, half yeah. of it comes to like, you know, over the last 15 years... Your experiences being a waiter. I know that you were a waiter at, yeah, at like that's a restaurant true. Um, in the collections uh, company that you were working at. Uh, the television show that we haven't even got into, but you worked on a TV show. Like you have placed yourself in all these crazy experiences, and then you mix that with your skill set, and and suddenly this this person who you know sets out to be one thing, right? You know, like to be the best director, the best producer, the best camera operator, the best visual storyteller in the world, actually. Is, is able to be just like a totally yeah. killer account manager and salesperson. Well, listen, like at the end of the day, you're dealing with people, right? I'm, be, I'm, I'm a person, you're a person. And in the, at the end of the day, if, if you're just creating a relationship and not just a business transaction, uh, the client's going to actually care about you. And they, they're going to they're gonna do everything possible to actually try to make your job easier. Like I have calls with clients where they'll be like, Oh, Oscar, but I don't want to put you in a tough spot. I'm like, don't worry about me. Like, this is my job, you know? And it's you know, something like, don't worry. You know, this is, this is just, this is my job. You know, it's fine, clients, you know? We've had clients but, email me and say, I'm so happy that Oscar can finally put his vision out there. <laughs> right? They, they see the creative so much as your vision that they want to move forward with the project, not because they need it, but because they feel like this is, this is Oscar's opportunity right. to shine. Well, that's, I mean, well, that's a huge compliment. I don't know. Uh, Listen, I think had, I, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to brag some more. <laughs> I have I have been at a work event where some where one of our clients brought their spouse, and their spouse came up to me and said, "I need to shake the hand of the person who is <laughs> who has founded the company that Oscar works at." <laughs> Jennifer's husband. Yeah, came I, up I to me. I can tell you. Yeah. And he's just like, I, "I I have to meet this man. I have to meet the man who started the company <laughs> that Oscar works at." <laughs> I think the last word I'll say. I think. But for me, processes are, are like an internal thing. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you need to impose on your clients. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the processes have to be very clear for us as an agency, uh, for me on how we, I communicate to the rest of the team. But when it comes to the client, I mean, yeah, it's like clients always right. So, so yes, you can, you can get rid of process, but, but they need to know that you know what's next. Okay, let's just say that the process is something that is malleable. Mm -hmm. And internally, it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the client, you have to understand that the client will have their process as well. Oh, I need to take it through legal for two weeks or I need to consult with 50 people. You know, mm -hmm. That's their process. And, and if their process is clashing with your own process, listen, like 99 out of 100 times, you're going to follow the client's process. And that's just how it goes, right? <laughs> right. So don't fight that battle. Don't fight just it. Just get to the solution, right? And then take that little piece of the client's process and make it part of your process just for that one project. And listen, you might work with that client in one, two, three projects next time, and you might follow a different process because Every just time. the project is different, right? right. So, so, so the yeah, secret, I'll just leave it at the that. The secret to Oscar's 
success is listen. Be flexible. Be flexible, come to understand what the clients really value and then just work with them to help them achieve that. Yeah, and when your team is uh, freaking out on you, um, <laughs> just, just be very clear that you know, you're breaking the rules for a reason. I love it. Thanks, yeah, Oscar. I love it too. Okay, here's my keys. There's a McDonald's one block from here if you want to grab something. We'll be back out at 2 p.m. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.